Hey guys, good morning. Before we get to this week's report, a couple of shout outs and, and one thing I want to ask for some information on. First off, congratulations, Glenn Freeman uh, won the two day FLW BFL tournament on Rayburn this weekend, won it by eight pounds, a very dominant win. So, congrats, congrats to Glenn. By the way, if, uh, if I got my numbers right, I think that's his 12th FLW win which ties him with another guy down here. That, that, what's that Newberry guy's name? Dickie, maybe? Anyway, so uh, we'll be interested to see if either one of those guys, you gotta figure one of them's gonna win again and probably several more times. So we'll see uh, who takes the lead with the next FLW win between those two guys. So uh, also, shout out to my buddy, Tommy Mackey. Uh, Tommy has just won two out of the last three years on the uh, BFL Cowboy Division points race. Uh, I've won one of those. Uh, that's a neat deal. It's a big deal. I consider it one of the uh, marquee accomplishments in my uh, regional career down here. So to do it twice is really solid. So congratulations, Tommy. Uh, and then the last thing I want to mention uh, is it bothers me, but I'm going to mention it just because somebody might have seen something. Sorry, my phone was buzzing in my pocket. Uh, Roy Radcliffe came by the, by the house here in Zavala yesterday evening. And uh, on Labor Day weekend, Roy's boat and truck, or excuse me, his trailer and truck were parked at Monterey on, on Monday, Labor Day. And uh, somebody stole his Phoenix boat trailer off the back of his truck. So, number one, I guess we all gotta start locking our trailers, which is disappointing. Uh, number two, I wouldn't be surprised if one of us saw that. Um, you know, truthfully, if I pulled up and a guy was pulling a trailer off a truck, I would just think a guy was broke down somewhere and probably wouldn't pay much attention to it. Uh, you know, but if you saw somebody messing with, with a trailer on Labor Day, give me a shout, KenSmithFishingAndOutlook.com, and I'll connect you with Roy and we can figure out, see if we can figure out who did this. or. If suddenly you know somebody trying to sell boat parts or, or trailer parts or a trailer <clears throat> that probably doesn't belong to them, uh, let us know because uh, this is, that's crappy. Uh, you know, and I know we've got some, some methamphetamine problems down here, but, and you know, people say they'll steal anything that's not tied down sometimes, and this was tied down. This was connected to a boat, but, or excuse me, connected to a truck. So uh, I, I'm sorry that happened to you, Roy. Uh, Hopefully we can get a little information on here. So if you saw something that didn't look right on Labor Day at Monterey Boat Ramp, give me a shout. So uh, let's get to this week's report and, uh, and my struggles in the final BFL tournament of this year. Here we go. Hey guys, Ken Smith, Ken Smith Fishing. Yes, I'll still wear a Razorback shirt even though we're awful this year again. We're the only team that's been, been rebuilding their football program since the 1950s. Anyway, uh, so Rayburn report this week, but before I go there, uh, a couple of tournaments of note. The first one I want to talk about is, is an important deal for me. Uh, and unfortunately, I can't be there. But Fishing for Freedom is a tournament put on. If you guys don't know, uh, Cliff Brown is the owner of Texas Boat World at Harker Heights. That's who I get my Ranger boat through. And Cliff is retired military, super guy. And one of his passions is uh, our men and women who have served and are still serving in the military. So the Fishing for Freedom tournament is a draw tournament, but the cool deal about this is you show up with your boat and they're gonna pair you with uh, military personnel who wanna go tournament bass fishing. But basically you get to take them on a guided fishing trip, uh, get to meet somebody new, uh, get to participate in a great cause, and uh, I would really like to see this fill up. 300 boats is his full field. Uh, it, you can find this. All you have to do is Google Fishing for Freedom. I'll put the link below if you're watching this on YouTube. 300 boats is a full field. They're not even halfway there right now. So uh, they will have, Cliff told me, over a thousand people, uh, military personnel and their families uh, for dinner on Friday night, October the 4th. Uh, I hate the idea that some of these guys are going to stay on the bank. And yeah, I, I'm one of the ones that should be there and I've got a prior commitment. Uh, I will be there next year. I've already told Cliff. It's, he always said it's the first Saturday in October every year. Uh, it's already on my calendar for next year. So if you're in Central Texas, you have a bass boat, you want to go fishing and have fun and meet a, uh, some new people, uh, or even if you're just free and not in Central Texas and willing to make a little bit of drive, 
this would be a great cause to do that for. Next weekend here on uh, on Rayburn, we've got the uh, we've got the college regional. So the winner of this goes to the national, and from the national, you can actually qualify to fish the Bassmaster Classic. I will be working that tournament uh, as a roaming uh, MC. Uh, if you've never seen that, uh, come prepared to get made fun of or get poked at a little bit. Uh, so that'll be a good time. Even if you don't fish that tournament, come out uh, to Umphreys and support our weigh-in on Saturday. So come out and support that weigh-in on Saturday. And then stick around Sunday. Uh, turn, uh, college guys, you can fish this as well. Uh, assuming you have not won $2,000, you and your partner, on Sam Rayburn, uh, this year you can fish the Average Joe's Tournament on Sunday. It's a trailer tournament. starts at 7, stop fishing at 3, $165 entry fee. And uh, this, this allows you, even if you're not a local, or especially if you're not a local, to come down and fish on a very level playing field uh, against uh, other guys put on by a great organization in Outlaw Outdoors. So come down and fish the Outlaw Outdoors tournament on Sunday. Uh, and then we've still got the benefit coming up at the end of October on Ray Hubbard. I'll talk more about that as well. So those are the three. Now the BFL was this weekend. So my lake report is Friday, me fishing, uh, practice fishing the BFL, and then yesterday actually fishing the BFL. I hadn't been down here in a couple of weeks, and, and my performance certainly dictates that or shows that. Uh, I struggled. Uh, I struggled to get bites. So Friday, um, I was banging around, and I got out on a, on a big flat uh, in the front of some big creeks on the north end of the lake. Most of you who see this footage are going to know right exactly where I am. And um, I, I really, so by the way, so I, about, let me back up. I spent, so I didn't get on the water till about noon Friday. So I really only got about a four and a half, five hour practice day. And I spent most of my day um, shallow trying to find some frog fish. The backs of a lot of pockets have pads in them. Uh, there's some scattered mill full back there. And uh, I spent a lot of time just trying to find some fish in there. I, I threw frogs. I flipped some of that stuff and never had a wave, never had a bite. So finally about 3.30 or 4, I went out deep and started running places where I've caught fish before. Uh, actually, I take that back. Uh, I started deep that morning, or not that morning, when I got out there, and I did catch this one little Kentucky right here. And what you see there is I'm using a, a biffle bug as a search bait. Uh, basically, to me, it's kind of a dragging a, a you know a six cents hybrid jig combination with throwing a big crankbait because you can keep it moving. And uh, I had several thump it, but that was the only fish that committed to it. Uh, and then I came back late in the afternoon and started doing the same thing again, just search doing using it as a search bait. Didn't do any good. Had some fish come up next to me. Uh, fired a little six cents crankbait over there and caught this fish right here. All right, well, I'm having camera fits, but I finally just picked up a little square bill, came up shallower. I'm up here in about 12 feet of water. Just started, just started grinding it around and caught a solid, probably a three and a half pounder. Keep cranking a little bit, see what happens. First decent bite. So uh, I had another one uh, actually almost jerk a, uh, a six cents hybrid jig out of my hands. I mean, just boom, boom, and take off with it. And I shook that, I got free spooled and shook that fish off. And then I had another one thump it and swim with it and drop it that I probably could have caught. So I decided to start there um, yesterday morning. And I didn't catch crap. Uh, Donze, my partner, had a super nice young man who's at Sam Houston State. Um, fished with me, 21-year-old, his first BFL tournament. And luckily, he did catch a fish. I feel terrible. I, I always pride myself on being on enough fish that my co-angler can catch a limit, too. And it just didn't happen this tournament. But 
he whipped out a drop shot on me and caught this fish right here. I think I got a little bit of footage. If not, I apologize. And uh, he caught another couple of short fish throughout the day. And then I just, by 10 or 10.30, I didn't have a fish. And I just started running kind of quasi deep spots trying to catch a limit. And was able to, throughout the day, I've got a little bit of footage right here. I was able just to, to scratch out a little bitty tiny limit. I did pick up my square bill again. Let me actually show you what that square bill is. So this is my setup I was throwing that square bill on. I know this is not gonna surprise anybody because this is sort of one of my go-to rods. This is that mock Carolina rig rod. It's a big long seven foot six rod. It's not my preferred crankbait rod, but it is my preferred crankbait rod for what I was doing, which was needing to make 50, 60, 70 yard cast fish that were chasing. And what I was doing is I'd see those fish chase and, and I only did this for about 30 minutes and just caught this one fish and realized this is not gonna help me any, but it, it did call for me. I think it's my biggest fish of the day. Um, so I, I use this big, long, heavier rod so I can throw it further. I can't throw it as far on the perfect crankbait rod as I can on this rod. And I also make one other adjustment. So this is a TS1 HMB but it is in a six, eight to one reel ratio. Because when I make that cast, if they come up somewhere else, I wanna get that in pretty fast and make another cast. Usually I crank with a five, four or five, one to one uh, crankbait reel. Uh, the bait I'm throwing, I'm throwing it on 15 pound Invisex Seaguar. And that's that little flat bill. And I don't know the name of the color, but I'll put it right below it right there. So it's a square, excuse me, it's a flat sided crankbait. And to me, well, it, when I get around them, if there's fish around, they will bite that bait. And I like throwing the flat side. Uh, it's a little tighter wobble. And I think those chasing fish, they're out there chasing shad and it just throws a little different vibration and they'll eat it. And so I caught two or three fish out there on it, but only one that helped me. I wound up yesterday getting uh, eight or nine keeper bites, I think, throughout the day. So uh, my biggest one, I actually lost my biggest fish. It was a two and a half pounder. It wouldn't help me. It took 13 or 14 pounds to make the cut to fish today. Uh, so, and I'll be real curious to see who wins today. There's, there's a couple of really good fishermen. Glenn Freeman, who you guys have met actually in this video series, I'll post right there. Uh, if, you, if you're watching this on YouTube, that little eye in the corner up there uh, is a series I did with Glenn Freeman and Albert Collins fishing here on Rayburn on structure fishing. I suspect Glenn is out fishing deep. Uh, he had a pretty good stringer the other day. He caught an eight pounder, I think out of a brush pile. That's third hand, but um, I think overall yesterday, from what I heard and what I saw, 
uh, the, the shallow, there is still a shallow bite. There's still a frog bite. You college guys coming down here who are shallow specialists, I think there's a chance you can catch some fish doing that. I think you can catch some big fish doing that. But I think overall, the better fish are still coming mostly out deeper. Uh, you know, I think up the rivers, and I'm not saying up above the 103, but up the lake, there's still some shallow fish. If you can find any grass, uh, hydrilla, milfoil, or lily pads, there's fish around those. Uh, the water has cooled off just a smidge, uh, so it's down in the 80s now. Uh, it should just keep getting better. Doggone it, a hummingbird just flew in here. Fly back out of here, that a boy. Uh, sorry about that. I've had hummingbirds get trapped in my barn before, so you can't get them out till dark. Anyway, uh, that's what I got for you. It was a tough tournament on me. 22 pounds is leading it. Uh, there are obviously still brush pile fish if you get a cloudy day. I will tell you that thirsty, it was cloudy and rainy and uh, everybody I talked to whacked them. And they whacked them shallow and they whacked them deep. A buddy of mine, Scotty from Arkansas, said that where he was, there were just fish knocking bait around shallow and he said it was just stupid easy thirsty. So if you guys happen to get lucky uh, and catch a little cloudy day, it probably a better bite. I feel like you know we were just post a tropical depression, which is about as big a front as you can get down here. And that probably made the bite a little bit tougher on most of us other than the few guys that, that really did catch them yesterday. So that's my fishing report. I wish I had better footage for you guys, but you know what? It's, it's fishing. Uh, I will be back down next weekend. We'll get some more fishing in and continue to try to get some reports up for y'all. So uh, thanks for tuning in. And I've got an experiment I'm working on right now about, uh, about well, I'll tell you about it when I get it done. So I've got a pretty cool experiment going. We'll see the results of that pretty soon. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you don't subscribe, please do. If you click the bell, you'll get the notice every time I post a new video, which is about twice a week. And uh, we'll see you guys on Raver next weekend. If you don't come fish the college, come to the weigh-in and say hello. Thanks, guys. Hey, guys, we've talked about this before, but I saw something yesterday that I need to remind guys because I'm just seeing something that's blowing my mind. So 147 bridge. Oops, sorry, camera slip. That's the Atoyic, that's the Angelina. That little spot right there is what's called Bird Island. You see, that's that hard timber line going up the lake. This is what's called the Amber Forest, and it is a forest. And I am seeing guys constantly running under the bridge, running around Bird Island, and running right back up into Harvey. Guys, there's a reason that's called a forest. I saw a guy hit one out there yesterday going about 50, knocked the motor up in the air, and he was on trolling motor from there on. He either knocked his lower unit off or he damaged it bad enough he couldn't go anywhere. It's really, really not funny, but not surprising, uh, at a weigh-in the other afternoon, I was standing talking to Clayton Bulware and Albert Collins. If you don't know those two names, Google them. And they said, man, the two things that are blowing my mind the most right now are guys running around Bird Island through the Amber Forest and guys running up here and running through the canyons. So do not run through the Amber Forest. All you got to do is run that little drain right there. You run in here, you run behind the island, and then you run that little drain right out through there, and you can run all the way up here, and you're fine. So you just run in behind the islands, run that little drain right there, and then run around, and you can run all of that. It's actually even shorter. It's usually smoother. Quit running through the Amber Forest, or we're going to put some more boats in the boat uh, hospital and hopefully not put some people in the people hospital too. There you go guys.